So today we're going to talk about brain rot, Gen Z's addiction to stupidity. Let's hear it. The internet has a this problem. Is interesting. People can't think for themselves. Um, 100% what the they can. My... Their attention spans the are getting worse and their memory is broken. Level 5 Gat Riz, Livy Dunn Rizzing Up Baby Gronk, Ice Spice What the Dog Doing, Skibbity Toilet in Real Life Only in Ohio. People are mindlessly stuck consuming nonsense or doom scrolling on their It's a different phones. language. If this were anything else, it would be considered an epidemic or a danger to society. Sticking out your gap for the Rizzler. But no, what you're looking at is none other than TikTok brain rot. We've all heard it before. Social media is rewiring your brain, targeting your dopamine receptors in the world of overstimulation. Most young people are fatigued, brainwashed, or on the road to amount to nothing. Make no mistake, you're not Skibbity or Sigma, you're being consumed by algorithms. And it's about time we took a deeper look into what's really going on. Hmm. The rotting epidemic. Over the you know, it's insane. It, it, you know, as much as I do have fun, you know, pay, even like the CJ Mattis videos, like the brain rot translations, uh, this, there really is an issue when it comes to, to people's attention spans, man. And a lot of people don't like talking about it. But, hey, I guess somebody will have to succeed if everybody else fails. Hmm. Over the last few decades, there have been monumental advancements. Bro, this was the days, bro. Back in the day in Walmart, playing the game, bro. You, your neck had to, you had to look up like this the whole time playing the game. From radio Boy. to TV to the internet itself, it all came incredibly fast. And every 100%. new turn, people love using what's new, with families hooked to the TV or the Nintendo or the PC. But then something changed. You could now have all of that in your pocket. And as soon as phones became mainstream, it was captivated with new apps like Candy Crush, Temple Run, but more prominently Last social medias like Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, all gaining billions of users across the world, with people spending countless hours a day on these platforms. And it would often be harmless. Random videos of cats or pictures of the beach, or even 140 character rants that would get you cancelled a decade later. But this brought something monumental. We now had access to an abundance of information across the internet, but also access to countless videos and photos from everyday people at the tap of a screen from your pocket. These types of content became incredibly easy to replicate, seen most with a forgotten app called Vine. Used for funny short form content, I would gain a quick laugh. It could be anything from a kid being hit in the face with a ball, or to someone saying D's nuts. Got it. You see, people loved watching and also posting on social media to essentially share and document their lives. And that was always the core purpose until people and companies realized these viral platforms could be monetized. And mm -hmm. here's where the issue starts. There now becomes a greater reason to hook and keep the viewer's attention. And as with anything that has a payout at the end of it, there becomes bad actors. From people 100%. clickbaiting and maliciously targeting young or vulnerable people online, to abusing FOMO and advanced editing tactics to keep you retained in order to make more money. This goes without saying people going as far to break the law or put themselves at risk once again at the shot of virality. But this was just the model of social media content we all came to accept. But then came an app which took this to the extreme. Musical. In 2014, yep. an app released called Music. Y'all probably don't remember this one. Dancing app where yep. you would lip sync this dance to TikTok. popular songs to get views and then mm. have the chance to go incredibly viral. And as everyone was already hooked to their phones, it didn't take much effort for them to become hooked to this chance of virality. It may seem incredibly harmless, but what if I said it wasn't going to stay that way? In 2016, Musical.ly was bought out and rebranded to what we now know as TikTok. And you see, TikTok took the short-form virality tactics of Vine and the pop culture dancing characteristics of Musical.ly to create the most addictive app of mankind. But what do I mean by this? TikTok uses a unique algorithm which learns what you like and which content to push you, without necessarily having to follow or subscribe to the person who made the content. This algorithm is incredibly effective at keeping users engaged, often leading them to spend hours a day scrolling through the app without even realizing it. Yep. And over the last few years, they have really mastered the art of this. Mm -hmm. And as I said, when virality and money is involved, people will do anything to catch your attention. 100%. With constant fast-paced, overstimulating graphics, words, edits, and phrases, all to keep you hooked. People have even gone as far to double up content with Subway Surfers gameplay or Family Guy funny moments, once again, just to keep you hooked. It's unfathomable. 
but I want to make something. It is insane the the lengths people go to just to keep you hooked, just to keep you watching. And it's kind of sad that people also fall for it. But I can't really blame them because if they watch it all day, of course, of course, they're going to be hooked to it. Of course, they're not going to. Bro, like. It, it's honestly terrifying, man, because as someone who doesn't really. The only time I'm really online is if I'm doing this or if I'm checking on people. I used 100 percent used to be a person that would just be always on Instagram. Like first thing I do, I'd wake up check Instagram, reply to some uh, messages, and then I'm just scrolling. And next thing you know, it's been an hour of my day gone. And I'm like, oh shit, let me get out of bed. Like 100%. And then some people just constantly do this. And you see them, even when they're supposed to be working, it's like, okay, let me do a couple orders. All right, now look at the phone. Let's look at some videos. Oh, let me get a couple orders. Let me look at my phone, look at some videos. And it's like, what else are they going to do with their time, to be honest? If you have everything in the palm of your hand, what is going to stop you from picking this up besides your own urge to do so, right? I haven't looked at my phone in like three hours. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. But it's the way the world is moving. And I, for one, am interested to see not only what happens, but to see if I can do anything to change it, not profit from it, but the ability to help mitigate some of the damages that are going to happen due to this issue. Companies are just going to keep making money. That's all they really care about at the end of the day. If the world burns and blows up, hey, they probably got enough money for a bunker. So they don't really give a fuck. But for other people, you know, it, it's their lives are literally going to end or going to move or be changed. or And all they can do is just scroll on their phone. Because that's all they're used to doing, and it's fucking sad. But, you know, personal accountability, man. People need to start actually relaxing the, these, this urge to look at their phones or look at social media. It's, and it's, there's no way that they don't know it's a problem, right? And addiction is definitely part of it. People get addicted to anything. Humans are naturally addicted to things. <laughs> I don't have no real answers, man, honestly, but let's keep talking about it. Something clear. Some people spend over 10 hours a day on TikTok alone. That's why it's not only their source of entertainment, but also their life and source of news and information, which as a side effect hinders people's ability to think for themselves or let alone think critically. And when so many people are so addicted to an app, which rewards fast paced, overstimulated content, it starts to diversify itself from other areas of the internet, even going as far to build its own language and slang. 100%. With words like Riz, Skibbity, Galvanized Steel and Phantom Tax all being popularized by TikTok. And when people see things online, they repeat these things. From Kai Sanat, a Twitch streamer using the word GAT to describe a woman with attractive features, to it now being used by literal children all over the world. People are changing their language and the way they speak as a result of everything they are fed online even if that is from a toilet with a human head. It, it's crazy. These phrases have been bracketed under the term brain rot. However, even the word brain rot itself has became the brain rot. Hey! Oh jeez, you're so skibbity, Pookie. I have one question for you though. Do you think I'm more alpha or do you think I'm a sigma? TikTok has even enabled useless videos to now be considered humor. From a piece of bread falling over to even buzzwords like zooming, edging, gooning, let alone a wizard running into shops. Yeah. People sit at home, watch TikTok for hours and hours, getting lost in the deep scroll. And then subconsciously start to pick up these words in their vocabulary, saying it to their friends at school or even work or in comment sections. And like I said, Everybody when uses people it. see more and more of the same content, mm -hmm. the cycle repeats and multiplies. And when done on such a scale with an app with billions of users, it's no wonder people are chronically online and have even made the stupidest stuff like Skibbity Toilet a viral phenomena. The main people popularizing this content are under 25. However, more alarmingly, a lot more people consuming it are likely to be under 15 with a developing yeah, brain. The Gen Alpha. But now you ask, well, surely, if someone's just picking up the words of pop culture and adding it into their vocabulary, there's nothing really wrong with that. And in most instances, you might be right. It's probably just satire or just embarrassing to say the word. It's, it's compound. 
Okay. Right now we have GAT, RIS, Phantom Tax, right? In the future, they will add more and more vocabulary and they will add more and more slang until eventually majority of the words that they use will be these TikTok slangs. You know, language is is something that I need to start studying more personally before I ever start to, to really talk about language. I'm still learning a second language, right? I'm trying to learn Thai. And in learning language, you pick up the, the culture, you pick up the, the little meanings that don't necessarily translate to what your uh, native tongue is. But what happens when a lot of the language that you're learning and using is coming from the internet? And more and more people start using these languages. Well, eventually, I, you know, it comes a point in time where almost majority of people are using these online slurs, not slurs as in like bad words, but they're using these online languages, lingos, whatever else you want to put it for their actual vocabulary, which will create a disconnect within different generations. At least this is my idea of what could possibly happen, right? If we have Gen Alpha growing up saying all these skibbity riz, blah, 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 right? The only people they're going to be able to relate to or talk to are other Gen Alpha, some Gen, uh, Gen Z, some millennials. By then, the boomers probably be gone, but Gen X probably won't be able to understand them. And then what happens after that when Gen Alpha are the 25-year-olds, the 30-year-olds, the 40-year-olds, the 70-year-olds, the 80-year-olds, you know? <laughs> the next generations are, I think they're they're going to be screwed you know i think millennials have made mistakes when it comes to raising their children and raising children isn't easy right i don't have children because i know it's difficult to raise children just by watching i'm an uncle to many children sure i'm an uncle i'm unk right even online people call me unk but people need to realize that society is also important Society, the thing that we live upon, the things that gives us the phones, the computers, the air conditioner, right? More people are picking up these slangs and terms and they're not really picking up skills that could transfer into a career. You know, they're going to feel more lost, more confused about who they are, what their identity is, because they're wrapped up in listening to everything online. They can't formulate their own opinions. They can't think for themselves. Critical thinking is absolutely important in life. If you don't have critical thinking, then you can't learn anything substantial. You'll only learn what you feel like you have to learn because somebody that you particularly enjoy said it, but they might be leading you astray and you won't even realize it nor have the ability to realize it because you lack critical thinking. It's absolutely sad. But videos like these are important, man. Thank you for making this. Um, Tom. Tom, Har uh, Tom Hayden. Thank you for making this. A sigma or riz. But it's not just picking up these words. It's also a symbol of how broken the internet has made people. If someone is so easily going to repeat words like gat or skibbity, it'll even start to repeat terms like baby grunk rizzing up Livy Dunn in Ohio, it's so easy to see the chokehold we're in. People can't think for themselves and regurgitate anything fed to them in the 15 second videos they see on TikTok. There is a vast lack of free thought. People don't make their own choices. This is easily slowly becoming comparable to an episode of Black Mirror. And even when people turn off the phone, they still can't think for themselves because oh. the short form content has fried their brain to the point where they need a Subway Surfer video playing next to them. And it all begs the question. Ever since its release, people have been critiquing TikTok, even going as far as to describe it as a weapon taking data and destroying attention. And that left- Bro, there's a lot when it comes to TikTok that you could talk about real life wise. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys don't want to know about it, but to have an app basically take all the data that you're giving them, they have a lot of power. Not only that, you're using their website, which is legitimately frying your brain. So you're making yourself more dumb and giving away all your information to this company. Nothing good could come of this at all. Literally nothing. 
but it's fast food entertainment. So why not just pick up the phone and keep watching if you think you're screwed anyway? The secret is you're not really screwed. You could free yourself from these chains at any moment. It just takes more effort to do so than it is to just pick up your phone and keep doom scrolling. Personal accountability. But if you don't take it, well, that's your fault. Nobody else's. Even going as far to describe it as a weapon taking data and destroying attention. And that left us with this viral moment in Congress. Of what nation are you a citizen? Singapore. Are Senator. you a citizen of any other nation? No, Senator. Have you ever applied for Chinese citizenship? Senator, I serve my nation I'm in asked, Singapore. I, no, I... I and with TikTok under threat of being banned in the US, it will be interesting to see how that pans out. But what are the actual impacts of brain rot? Studies have shown the constant bombardment of high stimulus fast paced content can lead to a reduction in the brain's ability to focus and think critically. This phenomenon often referred to as attention residue, meaning that even when you're not actively engaging with social media, the fragmented attention and shallowing processing still persist. Brain rot is often used as a coping mechanism, a term of humour, but also impacts you in everyday life, with many people unable to take a phone call, order their food, or even hold a conversation without saying the word skibbity, well let alone at all. But why is this happening? Well, people are so bound to the internet and what it's feeding them, and when that content is stupidity over and over again, they're not facing any real progression in their real life. Applying to all That's areas true. with no academia, no goals, and more often than not, that no drive to change. People end up caring about stuff that doesn't really matter, like how much Kai Sinat got phantom taxed on stream. It sounds like a joke, but I'm far from joking. People end up using brain rot terminology not only for humour or in the realm of TikTok overstimulation, but also in real life. Am I a simp for mewing to looks, Max, or is edging goaded? Edging goaded. Edging is goaded. Yes. He's giving sus Ohio NPC vibes. Save your Riz for Baby Grok and Livy Dunn, please. I certainly will. As I said, with even the words like Riz. But it's entertaining at the same time. That conversation was pretty entertaining, even though it's very weird. <laughs> You know, it's okay to indulge in the bullshit sometimes, 100%. You don't have to live a, a, a super straight and narrow life. You can have fun in your life, 100%. This video is an example of having fun. But it also is an example of how we might be screwed. Uh, it is what it is. Just <laughs> for Baby Grok and Livy Dunn, please. I certainly will. As I said, with even the words like Riz becoming word of the year, whether TikTok Word is solely the responsible for wow. the decaying ability of free thought Correct. or the attention span of the masses which this app has created, I have a solution. I have to make something incredibly clear. Solution, if huh? you're addicted to your phone or the internet, no one's coming to save you. Nope. You have to escape that rut yourself. 100%. And to fix your life, you need to get off your phone. 100%. The internet used to be the place where you escape from the real world, but now the real world is where you escape from the internet. But how do you actually do this? You see, I made the choice to delete Snapchat, TikTok, and That's I big. rarely use Instagram. And even then, I'm limiting my time on my devices using essentially blockers. You might ask how this works. There's this one app I use called Dopafast that blocks other apps on your phone, either fully or at certain times, and allows you to put limits on your addictions, including TikTok, YouTube, but also adult content, restricting you from the junk and the apps designed to keep you hooked. You need to make it as hard as possible to access the bad habits, and as easy as possible to access the good ones. Dopafast helps with this and has fundamentally helped change my life, dropping my screen time from six hours just to one, allowing me to actually get That's things big. done and be productive, like make this video. If you need to be on your phone less, try Dopafast. And if you use my w, link in the description below, you can w even add. get up to 66% off their subscriptions. Wow. I know people can be deterred from spending money, but wow. I don't mind paying a small cost for blockers, which actually pays me back so much more time in the long run. But yeah, to be honest, like I, you know, it's a sponsorship, you know, YouTube is run off sponsorship. So, you know, it is a bit wild. It's like, yeah, you want to help your life? Here's a sponsor. How convenient, right? At the same time, when it comes for money for time, you know, definitely time is more important. A lot of people think money is more important than time, but that's because you have a lot of time and you probably don't have a lot of money. But what happens when you have a decent amount of money and you still have a lot of time? You start realizing that time is important, man. At least that's my opinion. That's the way I look at it. It's like, yeah, I got some money. Sure. 
but I also enjoy having my time, enjoying my day, spending time with people I care about and making videos like these, having something to talk about and maybe create some type of positive change, right? This is just how I live. I'm not saying everybody else has to do this or they should do this, but it's it's something we we hundred percent should talk about, and I I feel like a lot of people don't take it serious. They don't take it seriously enough. They just bullshit their lives away, and it'd be so easy just to be the villain and just let people do it. Just let people bullshit their lives away, make a whole bunch of money, and then while everybody else is suffering, live a pers a, a personally great life. But I feel like fulfillment should be enjoyed by as many people as possible, right? Am I right or wrong? Like, what's it, what, like, how good is it to be at the top and you're the only one there? Bro, that's the loneliest shit. It's good to have friends around you. It's good to, to bring up your environment, your community, the people you care about. At least this is just how I feel. I mean, if you, if you guys feel differently, you know, let me know. What, what do you feel? Do you feel like you're the only one that matters? Do you feel like, Society is always going to change regardless. Like, what are your legitimate thoughts? I'm interested to, to see them in the comments below. But yeah, that's this was a great video. Um, any more closing projects you want to do? Work on yourself. Complete them tasks you've left undone. Become the best version of yourself. And a large step in the right direction is cutting out the apps designed to keep you hooked. Yes. I've been Tom Hayden. Thanks for watching. And thanks to Dopafast for sponsoring me. If you want. Yeah, it's a good video, man. It's a good video. It definitely, definitely gives me a bit to think about. But yeah, that that's all I have for you guys for now. I'm gonna go read my book, um, and relax a little bit, and then I'll make some more videos later today. If you are new to the channel, hit subscribe. Uh, we usually look at VTube content right now. So right now I'm working towards doing 50 episodes of a show I call VTuber Clips of the Day. So right now we're on episode 19. So when whenever we get to episode 50, probably going to not watch VTubers as much. Or if we do, it's going to be about community stuff. Because I even in clips, like I watched the Hololive clip yesterday, 10 minutes of Hololive clips. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Like some of it is legitimately funny and some of it I do enjoy, but a lot of it is just nonsense. And it's stuff people purposely feed themselves because it's, it's whatever. It's entertainment. It's a distraction from reality, blah, blah, blah. Whatever the reason is, you know, it, stuff in moderation is always good, but I can get a sense for myself that I am also watching it way too much. And there isn't enough actual conversation about anything. So we'll see. Life always moves forward, always. So try and move with it. Do your own thing. Live your own life. Enjoy your life. Sure, become the best version of yourself. I think everybody should try and do that, or at least better themselves, right? That's why we have New Year's resolutions. You know, Happy New Year. You know, this year, we're going to focus on losing weight. And then you do that till about April. And then you're like, oh, it's too hard. It's like, yeah, it is hard. But you have to keep trying. If you want to have some type of benefit for yourself, you have to keep going. But that's all the yapping I got. You guys have a good day. Y'all be safe, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you later. Brofist. Bye-bye.